Hi, welcome to AWS Julie. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different and I want to talk about how to get your first job in AWS or in cloud with absolutely no experience. I've seen a lot of talk in the communities about this. So I wanted to share seven tips plus what I have done to get where I am today. So as some of you may know, I started off as an administrative assistant. I was making $65,000 a year and I just accepted a new position that I'm actually starting on Monday in AWS that I'm really, really excited about. So let's cover some tips on what you can do to get your first job in AWS or in cloud with absolutely no experience. And the first tip is to look around and use the resources that you have available. Now, when I started out as an administrative assistant making $65,000 a year, and as a single mom with two daughters approaching college age, I could not afford training courses or a training subscription. So I chose Udemy courses instead. They're usually about $10. So that does make it more affordable. Uh, but you also have other resources that you can use. I looked at my current team because we were moving into AWS. We were migrating to AWS and I chose myself a mentor. Now you should probably ask in advance, Hey, would you like to be my mentor? But I sort of dubbed someone my mentor and that was our senior windows VMware engineer. He was the first one on the team to get his AWS certification. So I thought he would be the perfect mentor for me. And I just went to him with questions, you know, like how does patching work? What courses should I start? You know, how do I get that fundamental understanding of IT in general? Because I had no IT experience whatsoever. And then the other thing you can do is look at the rest of your team. I approached other people on my team as well to see how did they get to the current position that they were in, you know, and what they're working on. I looked at how they troubleshot, you know, how they approach new projects. I just tried to get and absorb as much of the information that I could as possible. But you can also network on Slack, on Discord, um, on LinkedIn, in Reddit. There's lots of opportunities where you can meet and see what other people are doing, what they did to get to that position, and see if they have any advice along the way. Plus, in those communities, as you're reading through the different threads, you can learn stuff every day. There's so much knowledge in those communities. So you can use those as well towards your learning process to change your life and to get a new job in AWS or in the cloud. And that leads us into tip number two, which is to commit to your training. So whatever training that you choose, schedule that out in your day. Maybe it's 30 minutes a day, maybe it's two hours a day, maybe it's just on weekends, but set up a schedule and commit to that. You dedicate that time to yourself to better yourself so that you can change your life, change your career and get the job that you want. And that leads us to tip number three, which is crucial, and that is to be passionate. So you have to have that burning desire and passion to change your life. And not only do you have to have that, you have to feed that. So everyone deals with imposter syndrome. I deal with that daily, especially being in AWS with only five years experience. My current team at A Club Guru, they all have 15 years plus AWS experience and IT experience, and I have five. So imposter syndrome is very strong, but what I choose to feed is that desire and that passion to learn every day, to be better, to get a better job and to know more. And again, you can do this also in the community. So on Reddit, in Discord, in Slack, on LinkedIn, you can get out there and you can network and you can meet new people and you can create relationships that may benefit you in the future or those relationships may benefit someone else as having a relationship with you. Maybe that opens up something for them. And that kind of leads us into tip number four, which is to apply for the positions that you want. And I'm going to go big here and I'm going to tell you to apply for that dream job. Okay. You're going to hear a lot of people say you have to start at the help desk. And I don't think that that is necessarily true. I did not start there. So a lot of people are going to tell you to start at the help desk, or you're going to have to take a pay cut to get into IT or to get in the cloud or AWS. But, you know, after you take that pay cut, you'll have room for an advancement so you can catch back up to your current salary and then go beyond your current salary. Well, I'm going to say to keep that in the back of your mind, but to go big, apply for that dream job. 
So even if you don't get that dream job, even if you see that as a rejection, it's not a rejection. That is a learning opportunity. So when you're applying for that job, you are getting an inside look as to what that employer is looking for, what that employer would be like to work for, what that team is most likely like, and how it would be working as that team. So you are learning so much and you can take what you've learned, like what that position needs, what you need to know to get that position. And you can add that to your learning path. You can add that to your training. So you stay committed to that training and that training path may vary. You may add or remove things along the way, but the point is, is to stay committed to that training and to go big and apply big, apply for that dream job, but apply for other positions that you are interested in as well. And another great thing about interviewing is that it's not easy. And the more you interview, the better you're going to get at it. So when you have that opportunity and you have that knowledge that you think you need for that job, you're going to also have built up your skills in interviewing. So all of that is going to help you in the whole process. And then the next tip is to keep learning. So I think that this is crucial. I think that you need to learn every day, even after you get that job, because the thing about AWS and IT, it is always changing and we have to stay up to date. We have to stay current. AWS calls it stay in evergreen. So that's really something that's crucial. And so you have to keep learning. You have to keep getting a deeper understanding and a deeper knowledge into whatever field you're going into. And I'm going to talk about certification exams here. A lot of people think that certifications are not really worth it. And I don't agree. So I don't think that you can go out and get a certification and then get a job in AWS. I know it doesn't work like that. But if you have that certification, it shows the employer that you have that passion and that drive and you have taken the time to better yourself. And if you have no experience in AWS and you're applying for a position, you're in a better situation if you have no experience and a certification behind you. And I found taking a lot of AWS certification exams that they all build on the next. So when I passed the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate exam, I thought, okay, this is it. I know AWS and I can go and get a job in AWS, no problem. And it doesn't work that way, of course. But when I passed the developer certification exam, I was really shocked at how much more I knew at that point than when I passed the certified solutions architect exam. And then when I passed the sysops, it was another level of shock. I knew so much more than I knew when I passed the certified solutions architect. And then if you take those professional certification exams, you get a much deeper understanding of AWS. And that is really crucial. So even though I only have five years of experience, I have a lot more depth in certifications uh, than most people, and that really helps you. So when I took my first job in AWS at Linux Academy as an AWS training architect, I went from making $65,000 to $95,000. Now that's a huge pay jump for me. And I think one of the things that helped me was I had the certifications behind me because at that point I had maybe three months of viewing and watching on the sidelines of what my current company was doing as they were migrating to AWS. I didn't have any hands-on experience. I had done some research and some little projects here and there, but I didn't have any real world experience to use in that application process. But I did have multiple AWS certifications underneath me, and I think that that helped. Now, when Acon Guru bought Linux Academy, I took another pay job of $10,000 and a promotion. So you see here, I started off with no, absolutely no IT, no AWS experience whatsoever, and I'm now making $105,000 a year. So I think that that is really amazing with having no experience. Now, right now I have five years experience, but when I started out, I had absolutely none. So I think having the certifications, it will help you if you don't have that experience. Now, if you have years and years of experience and you can talk AWS and you can, you know, whiteboard and do anything that they ask you to do, certifications are probably just going to look good for you. But if you're starting off with no experience, certifications are going to really help that, you know, you might not get the job still, but you're going to get the chance to interview for that position. And again, you can learn from that and use that in your learning path. 
And then the last tip I'm going to give is hungry eyes. So if you don't listen to any of my other tips, listen to this one, because I think hungry eyes is the key in the interview processing and into getting your first job in AWS with no experience. So what are hungry eyes? Well, my first manager, Joe Miller, when he hired me as an administrative assistant, he told me he chose me over all the other candidates because I had hungry eyes. And I didn't really know what that meant, but I think he saw in my eyes that passion for the job. You know, I wanted that job because at the time I was only making 45,000. So that from going from 45,000 to 65,000 was a huge jump for me. And I really, really wanted that for myself and for my daughters. And this job that I'm starting on Monday, I was told also that I had the hungry eyes. Now, I'm sure other people that applied for the same job were probably more qualified for me. You know, I only have five years of experience, but I have that passion and that desire for AWS and for helping others in AWS and learn AWS and break into AWS. And I think that that portrays out in the interview process. Because not only are potential job employers looking at you for your education and your experience, they're also looking at you to see how you're going to fit in on their team and seeing what type of person they think you are. And if you have that passion and desire in your job interview, I think that that's going to really give you an edge over all the other candidates that are applying. And those are my seven tips to help you get that first AWS job with no experience. Please feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know if this is helpful. Let me know if you want me to take a deeper dive into anything I've covered. And please feel free to reach out to me. I'm always in Slack and Discord on LinkedIn. You can leave a comment below, like I just said. I'm always here to help. I'm really passionate about helping others change their lives. I think that I was really lucky to have the mentor that I had and the opportunities that I had. And I do want to pay that forward and help as many people as possible. So again, I'm here to help. Please come and use me. You know, I'll always do whatever I can to help you succeed. Thanks so much for stopping by. And I hope to see y'all again real soon.